All right, so if you've been keeping up with your verse by verse studies on Revelation, we're going to look at Revelation chapter 14, verse 4. Now remember, uh, this is a great verse to talk to Jehovah's Witnesses. So with Jehovah's Witnesses, they believe that they are the 144,000 that's already up in heaven. So because of that, the remaining JWs, they cannot go to heaven. But they have to rule over the earth. Well, uh, that's ridiculous. This cannot apply to Jehovah Witnesses because I like to give them a hard time. It would be referring to virgin males. Now, uh, I am going to be open to this fact because since Revelation is a deep book, I have to be open to all sorts of logical interpretation as long as they're scriptural. You can't just put some kind of classical idea in there. So, virgin males, even though it says that, it's going to be something spiritual. It doesn't have to be literal. So, it may not be some form of celibate person, like a Catholic priest, for example. So, it may not be that. It may be just a reference to something spiritual. Now, the Jehovah's Witnesses. See, they, they can get all giddy and say, oh, so this spiritually applies to us. No, you cannot do that, because what are you going to do, as I pointed out, Revelation chapter 7. Revelation chapter 7 points out that these are literally in the tribes of Israel. Now, some people might say, but these are referring to spiritual tribes of Israel. Well, remember in Revelation, it's filled with spiritual application. And it's filled with what? Literal application. See, people don't think like that. A great example is Revelation 2 to 3. Now remember, those who are so doctrinally restricted, hyper-dispensationalists, try to apply that only to the tribulation. But there's a lot of rich application, spiritually more so, to the Christian church, especially when you look at the past 2,000 years of church history. Uh, compared to the restricted, literal interpretation where you try to apply it to a doctrinal time period of the tribulation Jews. Another thing to understand is that that's why the book of Revelation it can consist of a spiritual application and a literal application. If you take only one form of application, just spiritual, then you're a heretic. If you take only one form of application, literal, Listen up now, you're a heretic. In the Bible, it is important to have a spiritual and a literal application. You might say, well, how can I tell? People can make up things. No, you just look at scripture with scripture, read the verse as it says, and not only that, if you read so much Bible, then you would already know when you read Revelation who's this referring to. Now, for the tribes of Israel, we you know that this is definitely literal because it's mentioning the specific tribe name and the exact number. How are you going to do that? Isn't it ridiculous that I say, so Ralph is spiritually from the tribe of Simeon, Robert is spiritually from the tribe of Dan, and etc., etc.? That is plainly ridiculous. Plainly ridiculous. I can say one of these from the tribe of Nimrod, but anyway. <laughs> so we understand here that um, this is obviously literal, but not only that, didn't you know that even in a spiritual sense, this has to be Israel? You might say, how so? Revelation 12. We know this is a spiritual application, not something literal with a woman up in heaven giving birth to. Uh, Jesus Christ, and that's referring to the Virgin Mary. See, heretical Catholic doctrine can be born from literal interpretation. Wow, so you better keep that in mind. So, in Revelation chapter 12, which we can recognize as something spiritual, if you compare that with Genesis, as well as other portions in the scripture, we know that this is what? Israel. So whether you make it spiritual or literal, you cannot escape the fact that it's Israel. Not only that, when the tribulation begins, you don't see church mentioned one time in your Bible. 
And when you look at salvation throughout the entire tribulation, I guarantee and promise you this, it's not going to match Pauline epistles. It's going to more so match with Old Testament major and minor prophecies. Now, if you doubt me, look up certain salvation methods in the tribulation and compare that with Old Testament verses. Compare that with the previous videos that I already taught you. That tribulation salvation is undoubtedly Jewish and different from the Christian church. All right. Now, if you believe in a spiritual application, and rather than taking it like some hyper dispensationalist that everything's literal, you're going to miss a gold line, which is comparing scripture with scripture. There is a new form of doctrine. I'm not saying all hyper dispensationalists are teaching this, but I noticed that there is some form of hyper dispensationalism. So HD. So just because a person says dispensational, don't believe them. Remember that. If you look at the channel, if it says um, Grace or Berean, most often, that's most likely going to be from a hyper dispensationalist. Especially when they mention the body of Christ started not at Acts 2, but in the middle of the book of Acts. They use the term mid-Acts. You hear that? Leave that channel. That's a hyper dispensational group. So beware of that. Hyper dispensationalists, what they're going to overlook if they deny the spiritual application over here is that these virgins, you see that? Compared to Matthew 25, please. And then I want you to go to Ephesians chapter 5, please. So Matthew 25, and then Ephesians chapter 5. Now, some of the people who like to give me a hard time, I just want to mention this, is that, um, obviously, I don't want people to panic and think that I'm here with a mass amount of people doing church service. This is only live stream, and the only people operating is just text staff. Okay, so I just want to make that very, very clear. Okay, so anyways, <clears throat> the hyper-dispensationalists, what I do not like about them is that what they do with the church is known as the Bride of Christ, right? But they try to make this Jewish. Now, some hyper-dispensationalists have common sense and they don't fall for it, but there's a rising number that keeps saying that Bride is referring to Jews, not the church. Watch out for that nonsense. This is Pauline. Is this Pauline or Jewish? This is Pauline, Paul's epistles to not Jews, but non-Jewish people, the church, Christian church. Now, they try to combine it with Matthew 25, but see, then that means they're not King James only Bible believers. If you're King James only Bible believer, it's not virgin, it's what? Virgins. Whereas this one is what? Change? Virgin. Singular. That's why there's no distinction here. Why would Paul say everyone is united one in the body of Christ? Why would he say that? How the hyper-dispensationalists answer that? Not only that, Matthew 25, if you compare scripture with scripture, virgins makes sense because of which chapter making it plural? Revelation 7, 144,000, not a singular group. See that? Now, think about a uh, wedding ceremony. Have you ever thought about a wedding ceremony? Is it uh, just the bride and the groom? Sometimes they do it because they like to do things easy and quickly, but if you want to do something more official and significant, who do they pick out? Bridesmaids. See? And what's interesting is they try to make sure that they're virgins. Now, not necessarily all weddings do that, but if you uh, study more about wedding ceremonies, they do a form where it's virgins. They like to pick that. Why? So that, you know, the bride tosses a flower, and the bridesmaids can get their man waiting. A lot of uh, good spiritual application. Yeah. About Jesus Christ coming with the bride. 
And you ladies are waiting for your husband to be, but the husband is like to Christ where he's coming back for you. Amen. He will come. He Amen. will come. You just wait on the Lord. Wait on the Lord. I know 100% that it's true. That I'm going to give you the right person at the right time. Okay. So let's look at Revelation. Uh, excuse me, not Revelation. I'm in Ephesians chapter 5. And then Matthew 25, right? So let's look at Matthew 25 first. Now notice how this is tribulation and how this is Jewish. Matthew 25, 1. Then shall the kingdom of heaven or kingdom of God? Kingdom of heaven, right? Yeah. Okay. If you're deep into dispensationalism, the kingdom of heaven is a Jewish kingdom. That's what hikers will have to admit. Or hikers, they sometimes now reach at a divisive state where they're their own opinion now. So I can't claim it now. It's just that bad. See? See, it shows that their movement is all confusion. And God is not the author of confusion. But anyway, the kingdom of heaven shall be likened unto ten what? Virgins. Now look at this. I read this before, right? Do you? If you read from verses 1 to 13, when Jesus is coming for them, I taught you at this previous video, right? There's going to be tribulation Jews who are going to miss the rapture. Why? Because the rapture is conditional based on works. Your pastor already taught that. The previous chapters of Revelation. So that's why their oil, they're trying to work in regaining the oil. And notice that if you think these are saved people, uh, you'll notice that the verse says, uh, I never knew you, uh, at verse 12. Oh. Barely I say unto you, I know you not. Mm -hmm. uh, compare that with uh, every passage where God sends a lost soul to hell. He says, I never knew you. So people who are, there's another brand of heresy called revised dispensationalists that you got to watch out for. These people, like hikers, claim they're dispensationalists. But what they are is that they're a revised form of today's modern scholars who are based not on the King James Bible, but mostly on what? Modern translations. So because they're mostly based off of that, there are people who profess to be KJV to reinterpret the verse, pay attention to how they read it. They will keep saying that this has nothing to do with salvation. They try to apply it to your fellowship. Now, how can you do that with Matthew 25? Or they'll try to say that these people were never saved to begin with. Well, how can you do that? See, so anyways, let's uh, continue on with our main passage. Because people who receive the Holy Ghost, if that's the oil, see, that, that means it's in them. It doesn't run out. Mm. It doesn't go away. So that, this does not mean that these people were never saved to begin with. They have the Holy Ghost. They have the oil. Christians are promised, sealed unto the day of redemption from the Holy Ghost, Ephesians 1, 13 to 14, and Ephesians 4, 30, no matter what sin that they commit, <clears throat> or even if they grieve the Holy Spirit. But then Jews, you'll notice in Revelation and Matthew 24, it's all about enduring Faith and works, faith and works, resisting the mark of the beast. You've got to be, this is very, very plain. You have to be dishonest with scripture. You have to manipulate the meaning of scripture to your doctrine. If you don't read it as it says, where it says faith and works. Now I read that to you at Revelation chapter 12, right? Where it talks about verse 17, where it's faith and works over there. Uh, Revelation chapter 12, verse 17 and verse 11. And we'll see that later on in Revelation 14. Okay, enough of that, right? So now that we uh, decided these are Jews, look at Ephesians chapter 5. Ephesians 5. Ephesians chapter 5. Now look at the Christian church. Look at verse 23. It is very plain. Read it as it says. Don't apply it to Jews in Israel. Ephesians 5, 23. For the husband is the head of the wife, even as Christ is the head of the what? 
church, that's very plain. Piper's tried to twist the word church by making it apply to Israel. But when you do that, then why don't you do that with the rest of the Pauline epistles? Who do you think he's mentioning church as then? Huh? You better watch out for that. Okay, let's keep reading. Verse 25. Husbands, love your wives even as Christ also loved the church. See, the wife is likened to the Christian church. Now look at 2 Corinthians chapter 12. 2 Corinthians 12. Look at this. It's singular. It's unified. It's not divisive or split like the 144,000. Look at 2 Corinthians. And then we'll look at chapter, I believe it's 11. Now it's hard to turn scriptures when you're wearing gloves, so forgive me for that. So look at 2 Corinthians chapter 11. Verse 2. For I am jealous over you with godly jealousy, for I have espoused you to one husband. What, right? Not multiple. Mm -hmm. That I may protect you as a what? Chaste virgin to Christ. Look at that. It's singular. It's a singular virgin to Christ. Unless you want to promote the Muslim teaching about uh, Allah allowing a uh, harem of women, 75 virgins up in paradise. Yeah. Joseph Smith, Mormon teaching. That's like, watch out for the cipher dispensation. So. 